I'm Jen Winter and I own Daystar Filters and we're actually out of Warrensburg, Missouri, flyover country out there. We have lots of square footage, lots of acreage and big blue sky. I've had a very strong math background and I was studying mechanical engineering very early on, but I also was heavily into photography, scanning things, I worked in a newspaper, so I was in media with a math background or math with a media background, the two came together when I met my late husband, Vic, who was an astrophotographer with a Kansas City Star. And I was instantly hooked on astrophotography because it was a marriage of that art and science both in together. And uh, Vic really got me addicted pretty early. He, he pulled a 16 inch Dobsonian out and put it on Saturn and the rest was history. That's one of the worst place, ways to get hooked, of course, Saturn, how many people hooked on Saturn. I always like to refer to a story when I was in school. We had a gentleman who was working in Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas, and I was going to school there, and a gentleman discovered there was, a grad student said, what do you mean we have a planetarium and nobody goes to here? So he went around to every school, everywhere, brought every student, every, um, every person in town went to the planetarium that year. And in my little group, as we were going up to the top floor, we passed a room in this physics building, and there here were these guys in their little brown corduroy suits, just all excited because uh, Voyager was going by Saturn, Jupiter, I don't even remember because I was so small. But they, here they are, they're showing video of a planetary pass and getting data live. They were coming out of their skins, jumping up and down in the chair, and I'm like, well, you know, this is really interesting. And I was fascinated at that moment but I got dragged away to go to see the planetarium, which frankly, after seeing actual images of the planets, seeing the dots was a little bit less. Well, I think we need to get a little bit more hands-on and a little bit less hands-off. Uh, I'm finding that when we do outreach, and in our area of the country, there's an awful lot of outreach, but I find that the youth are becoming so addicted to their screens and there are so many good pictures of astronomical things out there that seeing something on the web is sufficient. They're satisfied by seeing these Hubble images. But when they have the chance to look through that telescope and see Saturn through the eyepiece, there's always a, a moment where they, they question, is this actually real? Am I actually seeing this? So that direct connection to the equipment, having a hands-on experience instead of a cyber experience, that makes more of an impact I, I see in getting them moved along further into astronomy. We found that schools have more difficulty getting uh, with budget issues. They're having difficulties getting people out to field trips for nighttime astronomy. But daytime astronomy, of course, you, you, you can go right to the school. We have outreach guys who can, uh, and there are even a lot of outreach support groups where you can participate and even have access to materials to get out and visit the schools. And during the daytime, the teachers are much more likely to have activities and the hands-on opportunities daytime versus nighttime. It helps a lot. The, the most important thing with the sun is, because the sun is so bright, astronomy is usually about collecting light and, and, and more light is better. But with solar observing, you're buying dark. The sun is already bright enough, so bright that it'll blind you. So with solar, we always have to reduce down the, the amount of light that's going to, uh, to damage your eyes through infrared and ultraviolet radi radiation. Uh, but also, if you reduce the light from wavelengths that you don't really care to see, then you can start to pick out uh, details that you wouldn't otherwise. And, and the hydrogen is all about, you, perhaps you remember in chemistry that you have these little emission lines that uh, in a spectrum you see lights light up in different colors. So we're going to isolate the color of light that hydrogen emits. So then, then you can, and hydrogen and helium is what the sun is made of. So then you get to see what the sun is really doing instead of it just being a big, big circle. Hydrogen alpha will be the brightest line, uh, and if we got more complicated, there are energy levels and how much energy it takes to make different wavelengths of light. Hydrogen also gives, uh, the alpha line gives a more interesting view of the sun. So you have it's more interesting, it shows more contrast, it's brighter, and it represents an energy level that physicists are interested in the science from. A lot of times folks don't quite uh, realize that the sun is a star. 
It's the most fundamental concept about astronomy and about actually solar physics. Everybody gets excited. There's even, what is this, the new TV show Rick and Morty is all about physics, all about the physics. Well, we happen to have a really cool physics experiment. Einstein's theory of relativity references things like the sun in it. And so, so solar physics is astronomy, except up close in a way that we can watch it change hour to hour, day to day. We're still today, even Citizen Kate is learning more about. The Citizen Kate was the project where they were looking at the sun during the eclipse. And we're still doing real science on the sun every single day to learn more about physics that we didn't know yesterday. So I like solar versus nighttime just for that um, interactive aha moment where it's not just black and white dots.